Hi, I'm Mr. Buckingham, and this video is on lipids. So these animals living in the Arctic have different types of adaptations in order to stay warm. And it turns out lipids plays a huge role in that. So the beluga whale will have blubber, which is a different type of lipid uh, aimed for storage. And that blubber just insulates the animal so it can live in colder waters. Same kind of thing with uh, caribou in Alaska, they will have, especially their, their legs, different um, molecules in their cells, in the membranes of their cells, in order to keep them intact and, and not freeze over. So in this video, we'll talk about uh, triglyceride. It is a type of lipid, and triglycerides are mainly uh, for energy and also storage of energy. Phospholipids are necessary for our cell membranes and they are crucial for things that go in and out of our cells. And cholesterol also will be in our cell membranes and it kind of keeps the fluidity of our cell membranes in check uh, and for temp regulation especially. And trans fat is uh, one that is uh, a little bit engineered. Uh, it occurs naturally in our environment, but uh, in really small doses, and we'll talk about what trans fat means in your diet. So all of these items have lipids in them, and they just are different structures of lipids. Uh, so butter is going to be solid at room temperature. Um, olive oil is going to be liquid at room temperature. They both have lipids, and then the uh, even the candle, the paraffin candle, is going to have some lipid structures in them and all of those if we ingest the butter and the oil not the candle uh, but the candle definitely has some type of energy and that energy comes from the different structures and the hydrogen bonds of the the lipid structure so the first one triglyceride is going to have three tails and this is what the 3d model looks like uh, the other one phospholipid is going to have two tails so it looks similar they both have a, a unique head on them and then the other one we'll talk about is cholesterol, and it looks kind of like a blob. So first, hydrocarbons are long chains of carbon and hydrogen. So this model up top is going to have carbon at each one of these turns, and the lighter gray is going to be the hydrogens that are connected to them. So that is bonding energy, and when our bodies start to process that, we're able to gain a lot of a lot of energy. So uh, the butter and the the wax candle is going to have that exact same type of structure. So when we have our triglyceride, which is going to have three fatty acid tails, it's going to be a lot of energy and it's actually more energy or more efficient energy than some of our carbohydrates. So the unique thing about a triglyceride is that it has a glycerol head in the uh, pink purple there and that is going to be attached to the three fatty acid tails. We call that, I'll write that down, fatty acid Tail. We can also write it like this. So each one of these turns, again, they just don't write it because they're lazy, is going to be a carbon. And you can see that not all of the fatty acid tails look alike. They're slightly different in structure. And what that means is that they could be saturated. So if they're saturated, it's going to be like this first one. So butter solid at room temperature, that means that there are so many hydrogens that there can't be any more, which is saturated. That's what it means to be saturated. So that means that it's going to be a single bond between all of those carbons. It's going to be, it's going to be able to stack. So when that happens, it's going to be more solid. If there is some unsaturated fatty acid tails, or if there are not enough hydrogen, um, atoms there, then that means that they're going to, there's going to need to be a double bond between those carbons. So like this one down below, you can see the double bond here. That means there's a missing hydrogen, which is also going to put a kink into that tail. So in this picture, it looks like there might be an unsaturated fatty acid tail. So those, those lipids are going to be liquid at room temperature they're going to be they're not going to be able to stack as easily so that means that they're going to act more like a liquid all right phospholipid they are necessary for our cells so they do have a an unsaturated 
uh, fatty acid tail, so that's going to be the kink part of it. And they also will have a phosphate head, and that phosphate head is unique to these phospholipids, and it's going to actually drive uh, some of the unique uh, structure or the unique behavior of the phospholipid, which is it's going to have a hydrophilic head, so it's going to have a polar polar head, which means it's going to go, want to go towards water, or it's attracted towards water. And it's going to have a hydrophobic tail, which means that it's going to be nonpolar. So that means it is going to move away from water. So oils generally are nonpolar, which means that the oil and water are not going to mix. But if it does have a polar region, that means the region of that molecule is going to be um, near the water or closer to the water. And that is important for our cells. So this image right here is a, an image of our cell membrane. And you can see that the tails are pointed inward towards each other. So this is a bilayer. So bilayer. And what happens is the heads will then point outward because they are hydrophilic, okay? And that is important because then there, it's like a little barrier for things coming in and things going out. And then we have these proteins embedded, so this big purple protein is going to aid in that process of regulating what comes in and out of our cells. And then, excuse me, cholesterol. If you see an image that looks kind of like a honeycomb, and there are two, um, two of the hexagons down below and then two on the right with a little chopped off one. That means it's most likely going to be cholesterol. And it does look like a saccharide. It is not a saccharide. It's a lipid. And what they do is they hold on to the fatty acid tails in our cell membranes, which is important. So if it is way too hot, our cells will naturally want to become more fluid and those phospholipids will start to move apart a little bit and the cholesterol will actually bond to them. They're really good at that, to the fatty acid tails and they'll, they'll keep them um, together. Same thing if it's too cold, so like those caribou, uh, the cholesterol is there in order to kind of space out instead of those fatty acid tails starting to come together. And stacking, that means that it's starting to freeze, and that's not a good thing. That means that the cell can't regulate what's coming in and out. Uh, those cholesterol will start to space those fatty acid tails and those phospholipids apart. And then too much cholesterol or too much of those trans fats uh, could lead to some pretty damaging effects on our, our body, and it could block some of our, our arteries and some of the, the blood going around in our bodies. So trans fats were engineered in order to um, to extend the shelf life of certain foods. So donuts being a classic, classic example, um, we put more hydrogen atoms or more hydrogen ions into fats. So an unsaturated fat, so like an, a regular oil that's liquid at room temperature, we can add hydrogen ions to it and then it becomes more solid at room temperature. So a classic example of that would be our hydrogenated peanut butters. So if it's hydrogenated, that means it's pretty solid. If it's something like Adam's peanut butter, which is not hydrogenated, you actually have to mix the oil uh, with the, the peanut butter. So this is, this is bad because if we have too much of them, it can actually lead to fatty deposits um, in our arteries and it can block our blood from moving around. When that happens, we have uh, heart failure and it's really not a good thing for our health. All right, so go ahead and go back and try and fill in the empty boxes. And that's it. Thanks for watching.